Oh, let's let's get back the pink one back. back. What? Let's get back the pink one. Hello everyone, I'm Adina from Plants But Better and today we're talking about these beautiful Syngoniums and I have with me two types. This one, which is Syngonium albo or Syngonium albo variegatum or just simply it's a white Syngonium, yeah? We're discussing that today. <laughs> and this one is Syngonium pink splash or Syngonium red spot, which is more uncommon than this one because it has pink variegation and we all know for some reason pink variegation is a bit more desirable at the moment. This is not our usual care guide because we have two plants that are a bit different however caring for them it's almost virtually identical so that's why we're combining two in one and this is today's video for you. <laughs> for the care guide actually I have two different grades because Syngonium albo is a bit tricky and I would say this is an 8 out of 10 only because this plant has reverted on me and I will show you in just a moment and for Syngonium pink splash it's definitely a 9 out of 10 easily could be a 10 out of 10 if you give it what it needs which is bright and direct light and all that good stuff and speaking of variegation let me show you what can happen with Syngonium albo right here so this one is completely reverted. It used to be a Syngonium albo, now it's a very green Syngonium. However, it's very pretty and all those failed, you can say, propagations ended up in this spot because I still like it and I will keep it as a personal plant. However, you've been warned, this plant can revert and that could happen either from the lack of light or just that you got maybe a very unlucky specimen. Maybe it's just genetics. So it can revert. And the second example, if you're familiar with my videos, you know about this Syngonium. This specimen is completely white well it's almost white is 99% white and in the previous video let me put a card in here which is the one about completely elbow cuttings I specifically show you examples on full elbow plants and why you should not buy them because they will end up like this this is gone these leaves are gone and this unfortunately will be gone in a couple of weeks too they do not have enough chlorophyll to sustain themselves and this is what happens when there is not enough green in your leaves why this happens you might want to watch that video for details <laughs> let's get back the pink one let's talk about light these plants are variegated which means they need a bit more light than the usual green plant if you give them enough light they will maintain that variegation and if you keep them in medium light or low light they will definitely revert for syngonium pink splash i didn't have an incident because i kept it under grow lights oh yes yeah you can definitely use grow lights for both of them and for this one i didn't have any problems with the variegation and for Syngonium albo, you already know. So yeah, bright and direct light for your Syngoniums. I will say this in each and every video, bright and direct light for almost 99% of your houseplants. It's not that they cannot tolerate medium light, but it's just better to give them what they need so you can keep them happy. And they will reward you with amazing variegation. Like, do you see this leaf? let's move on to watering i trained my plants to need less water and for syngonium albo because it has a really big pot maybe i water it once a month during summer yes you've heard that right once a month maybe once every three weeks but usually once a month and for syngonium red spot i do it maybe once every two weeks during summer and during winter once a month and a week you know i mean just stretch that period of time so the substrate can dry out almost completely i'm not saying they don't like the substrate a bit moist but if you have a cooler home i would recommend for you to wait a bit until the substrate is dry because that's how you'll avoid root rot and since i don't water them frequently <laughs> this is what happens this plant definitely doesn't have any problems with the roots. The only problem that this plant has is me forgetting to repotting it. <laughs> Maybe the next video will be about this plant's repot. If you forget to water your plants, your Syngonium, you will see them a bit droopy. And this is the case with both plants. Both plants are acting similar. They will be droopy and they will have yellowing leaves. <laughs> 
I'm speaking from experience, of course, and you could end up with a leggy plant. Let's move on to temperature. Average for both plants, I keep mine at around 24 degrees Celsius. You can go higher than that. However, I don't recommend to go lower than 15 degrees Celsius because they could get mushy and they could die from temperature shock, especially if you do it long term. What about humidity? For both syngoniums is great if you can give them a higher humidity, something around 60 to maybe 80% is great, however you can keep them in 50% and they are very adaptable, but please be aware of spider mites. Sometimes, maybe I'm a bit paranoid because these plants are a bit more expensive than the regular syngonium potophyllum, I get confused when I see dust on the leaves and I immediately think of spider mites and I do prevention treatments on my plants, so yeah it's important to keep them dust free as well so you don't panic like me. This one is a bit dusty. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me to mention that in this video. <laughs> if you give them higher humidity this will also promote aerial roots and aerial roots are great with propagation. They speed up the process and they will make it a bit more successful. Let's talk about fertilizer. And I used to be afraid to fertilize my variegated plants, especially the white ones, because if you over fertilize your plant, it's very easy to burn. I mean, if you've seen any over fertilizing damage, I think this is how you say it. <laughs> Let me put a picture, it's from a different plant, not from this one. And if you over fertilize a variegated plant, it could burn way easily than a full green one. Because the white part of the variegation is thinner than the green part. So I used to not fertilize my house plants that often, but when I do it, I feed my plant with a more diluted solution than usual just to make sure I don't over fertilize. If you fertilize the Syngonium Red Spot or Syngonium Pink Splash, you will actually see a difference in the color, in the pink color. It will be a lot radiant than it is right now. <laughs> So I need to fertilize this plant. And this is what I've noticed after fertilizing uh, pink plants in general, actually, not only this Syngonium Pink Splash. And besides that, maybe NPK is a matter of interest. I use a very balanced NPK of 10, 10, 10, which I alternate with one that is a bit richer in nitrogen. You can do it once a month during growing season. I should have mentioned that in the beginning. And other than that, in the winter time, if your plant is still growing, you can still feed it, but a bit less often, just to make sure you don't burn the leaves. Let's move on to substrate. And for both of my plants, I have a mix based on cocoa fiber, some perlite, some orchid barks, and I think I have some regular potting soil as well. This is a very affordable option. It's also pretty available almost everywhere and you cannot go wrong with this mix. I use this type of mix because it's super airy and it lets the water drain fast and this is how you get roots like this. <laughs> I'm gonna keep showing this plant off because it kind of deserves it. So you have to maintain those healthy roots to let them breathe and you have to avoid root rot of all costs. You can grow your syngonium and sphagnum moss as well. You can grow it in Leca as well. I know this is not the best example because this is super variegated and it will die, but if you had like a luckier specimen you can definitely grow it in Leca as well. It's not the type of substrate that really matters as much as the fact that it needs to be lightweight and it needs to drain water great. Let's talk about plastic versus terracotta. And to be honest, I haven't tried terracotta with these types of syngonium because syngonium needs to have its soil a bit moist. And terracotta is not the best option for that. But if you have more time on your hands, you can try using terracotta. But please be aware that you need to check the soil a bit more often. If you use plastic, as I've mentioned in the watering schedule, you can forget to water this plant once in a while, especially if it's in a bigger pot. Plastic will maintain the moisture a bit longer, obviously. <laughs> so for this segment, I recommend, I definitely recommend plastic this time. Moving on to repotting. And yes, this Syngonium red spot definitely needs a repot. Promise I will do it this week. This is the best case scenario when the roots are coming out of the drainage holes. 
This is actually a sign that your substrate is very lightweight and it actually lets the roots breathe. So that's why they can conquer the whole pot. Another sign, if you see yellowing leaves at the base and nothing changed, or maybe your plant is not growing anymore, you need to check the roots. Also, if you try to fill the pot and if it's a bit too dense, it's great if you can check the roots. If you gently pull your plant and if it easily comes out of the pot, you will definitely see the roots <laughs> if they need a repot or not. Another reason could be that maybe your soil is shitty. If you just got your plant and if the substrate is not amazing, you can wait for a month to let your plant adapt to your new environment and then you can move it to a lightweight and amazing mix like this one. Let's move on to propagation. The easiest way to propagate your syngoniums is by stem cuttings. I think I have some b-rolls from the syngonium porophyllum. The procedure is identical. You need a segment with a node. If you can see an auxiliary bud, that's great because from that bud new growth will come. Place your cutting in water and wait for new roots. When you are happy with the roots, you can transfer them in soil and you have your new plant. Another way is by air layering. We will discuss about that in a future video. I don't recommend air layering for this plant, not because it's not successful, it's super successful, don't get me wrong, but it's something that I would do for a more difficult plant. This one grows amazingly in water, so I would not complicate things, you know, I would just propagate it in water. Another way is by wet sticks. However, if you are not familiar with wet sticks, especially on variegated plants, I don't recommend doing this as a beginner. Maybe experiment on very cheap plants. Not that these ones are so rare and so not achievable, but just make sure you know a bit more about wet sticks before trying it for the first time with variegated plants. Try and see Syngonium podophyllum first, the regular one, and then try on these ones. Actually, propagation by wet sticks, it's amazing if your plant grows leggy. Chop your wet sticks, place them in a clean container with some sphagnum moss or cocoa fiber or perlite or whatever you have in your home. Place it into a zip bag after you spray it with a bit of water. That's how you'll create higher humidity for those aerial roots to take over and in a couple of months maybe, depending on your home conditions, you will have new plants. You can also take cuttings and place them directly in soil. That works as well. I like to do it with water because I get to see the roots grow and for me that is a bit more exciting than soil. <laughs> Moving on to pests. And I did mention about spider mites. I didn't have any spider mites on variegated syngoniums before, but this is a pest that could easily appear on these plants. Thrips can also be a problem, a more difficult problem. <laughs> the best thing you can do is to inspect your plants every time you water them. I can't stress this enough, please make sure to check your plants when you water them because that's how you'll spot any infestation in time and you will get to do the right treatments before bigger problems appear. So please take care of your plants. And last but not least, let's talk about toxicity. And unfortunately, these plants, both of them, since they are from the same family, <laughs> they are not pet friendly. So keep them away from any beautiful pet, any curious cat or dog or hamster or... Iguana? Hmm? This is how you say it in English, iguana. <laughs> so please keep them away from any curious pet. It's mildly toxic, it could cause irritation and it's best to just avoid the situation. Other tips and tricks for these plants. If you want more variegation, place them in bright and direct light. If you don't have that in your home, please use a grow light. That is amazing for both of them. I mean, that, this one. You don't want this much variegation in your plant, but this is an exception from the rule. This is not the rule itself. If you want great variegation, use grow lights. Both of them were kept under grow lights and they are great. They do amazing in grow lights, under grow lights, yes. High humidity for aerial roots. Aerial roots are great for propagation. I just mentioned that. And I forgot to mention how to fix your broken variegation, if that makes sense. So if your plant is reverting, you need to chop it off. Those green leaves, that green stem will not grow any variegated leaf ever. Once it's reverted, it will not go back. And if you have a full elbow plant, it's the same option. You have to chop it because... <laughs> 
again <laughs> that part will just die off that will not do anything that will not even grow unlike the reverted version so chop your plant don't be afraid to chop your plants actually if you do it you could promote a bushier look <laughs> if that makes sense and that's it the whole care guide for both plants they are super easy care once you get to know their needs if you have questions that i didn't answer in this video you can leave them in the comments i will make sure to answer each and every one of them unless this video gets like super popular and i cannot keep up <laughs> with, with the pace <laughs> If you gained some value from this video, consider sharing it with your friends and subscribing for more plant-related content. And until next time, don't forget to take care of yourself and your plants.